Okay, so we've given you our reviews of the S22 Ultra, shared with you its strengths and weaknesses, walked you through the cameras and that snazzy new processor and One UI 4.1, but there's so much more to explore. Uh, yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Oh, uh, yes, <laughs> much better. Like I said, so much more for me and my Fulani hat to explore in One UI 4.1 in this device with the Ultra moniker bestowed upon it. So we're going to brave this digital jungle with some urban jungle stops along the way and go mining for some features buried three or more menus deep to bring you this mini ultra guide to the S22 Ultra. 14 tips, tricks, and buried features. Let's go. There's an African proverb which says, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. So I've done my best to figure this all out and bring it to you, but I'm only one man. We're only one channel and one team, but there are hundreds of thousands of you here on the channel. So if you have a tip you'd like to share that we don't cover here, didn't cover in an article, leave it in the comments below. Let's go far together. Let's kick things off with customizing your interface. So you've got your phone all set up. You've transferred all of your contacts, apps, settings, and photos over from your old device. And now it's time to make it your own. My favorite way to do that is by loading up my favorite wallpaper, customizing my home screen, and changing the icons. Other than that, I actually like One UI, so I don't add in a new launcher. But what I do do is hit Good Lock, then its additional components, Theme Park, Quick Star, and Lock Star. Then I download one of Drum Destroyer Theme's excellent icon packs, and within minutes, I'm all good to go. How does all of this work? When you download GoodLock and open it, you'll see a few different apps under the Unit tab. Download Lockstar and Quickstar. Then under the Family tab, you'll see a few apps as well. Download Theme Park. Once you've done that, open up Lockstar and you'll see all of the various customizations you can do with it. Pick what you like, make sure it's turned on. Same with Quickstar. Customize to your liking and make sure it's turned on. Now hit the Family tab, open up Theme Park, and hit the Icon tab at the bottom. Tap Create New, then tap on the screen, then select the icon pack you wanna use. It will load, then you will see this arrow animate, letting you know that you need to install this new icon pack. Name it, then click OK. There are other system menus you can change. I modified my Quick Panels colors as well. Same process. Click on Create New and get your customize on. Also, you can set up your phone so that the accent colors match your wallpaper. Swipe in on the home screen, then go to Wallpaper and Style, then tap on Color Palette. This is more effective if you haven't done a bunch of color customizations in Theme Park, but the option is there if you haven't. Since we're talking about some of the initial things to do, let's talk about some default settings changes. By default, swiping up or down brings up the apps drawer on a Samsung device. Swipe in toward the center with two fingers to bring up the home screen menu. Go into settings from there, scroll down to swipe down for notification panel. Next, let's go into settings from the quick panel, scroll down to about and name your phone. You're customizing and making it yours, right? Might as well name this bad guy. Then let's back out and go to advanced features, scroll down to video brightness and select bright. May as well get the most out of those 1750 nits of new brightness. Leave the default video player selected. And if you find any app plays brighter than the others, you can always come back and deselect it. Back out of there and hit video call effects. Did you know that you can add backgrounds or colors to your video calling apps? Tap there and set the color or background image to whatever you like. Then when in your favorite video calling app like Duo, you'll now have an extra menu of options like auto framing and microphone options, which will help focus only on you speaking or opens it up to some other folk so that they can in the background chime in on the conversation. And while we're talking about brightness, let's swipe down and show the notification panel. 
Tap those three dots in the upper right and choose Quick Panel Layout. Let's set Brightness Control to show always. And I like seeing my device control and media output buttons always as well. So we'll set that now. We don't need to swipe down twice to see that brightness slider or access all of our media and smart home devices. A couple more things in the setup. Let's set this display to full resolution since it is a gorgeous display. 1440p is not enabled by default, so let's turn that on in the display menu and make sure also that adaptive scrolling is turned on so we get that buttery smooth One UI interface. And then let's open up the phone app, then click on the three dots to get to the menu, hit settings and tap on call background. From here, you can set up your AR emoji to dance when your phone rings. You can also go into the videos in your photo gallery, tap on the three dots, choose set as wallpaper, and you'll see the option to set as a call background. Boom, stop, don't proceed. Google has taken some steps toward protecting your privacy in Android 12. Among them, letting you know when apps are accessing sensitive data, which you may have recently copied to your clipboard. This feature is turned off in One UI 4.1 by default. So go back into settings, then privacy, then turn on alert when clipboard access. All right, carry on. And before we get to some things I want to share in the S Pen and camera menus, let's do some housekeeping. If you're someone who holds on to devices for years, you can expand the life of your phone by setting it so that the battery only charges to 85%. Not charging to 100%, then draining to 0% regularly will extend the life of lithium batteries, but all that glitters is not gold. As I understand it, these batteries love to operate in the 30 to 80% range. So if you also constantly let your battery drain to 15% or lower, you're putting as much wear on your battery as charging past 80% all the way up to 100. So if you're going to be disciplined in your charging cycles, turn on battery protection. If not, it seems like it's about as good as hitting McDonald's, ordering a Big Mac and large fries with a diet soda. Now, hitting the Messages app, did you know that you can resize your Messages bubbles on the fly? Now you don't need to resize all the text on your phone if it's primarily the Messages apps you're having trouble with. This works in both Samsung's text messaging and Google's text messaging apps on your phone. Simply pinch to zoom. Let's round up this tips, tricks, and buried features with some help for S Pen users and some camera tricks. First up, S Pen. The handwriting recognition on the S Pen is fantastic and easily converts most of your, your well, okay, our scratch to legible typeface. Simply handwrite your lines, then when you're done, tap and hold, and you'll see the convert to text dialog box come up. Next up, do you speak fluent GIF? Hard G. I do. You can rapidly make GIFs from videos on your phone by playing one, say in YouTube, then using the Smart Select tool. Choose the GIF option at the bottom of the screen and it automatically selects the video box. Now you can choose high quality or standard, set the video to the place you want it to start and hit record. With your screen off, you can also utilize the S Pen for taking quick notes. Maybe taking down a quick phone number, something else. Simply remove the S Pen while the screen is black and you're set. And the S Pen is like MasterCard. Don't leave phone without it. Go into the S Pen settings and turn on proximity alerts. Now, if you've left the pen out of the silo and you leave the area, the phone will alert you. And three things that I think are worth bringing up here that I didn't already talk about or show in detail in my full review. First one is camera burst mode. I had the chance to play with it more and the results really will vary by your distance to the subject. And as opposed to the dogs I capture for review, humans seem to fare much better. To use this, go into the camera settings and under the pictures category, choose swipe shutter button to take burst shot. Now you're good to go and you get all the action shots your heart desires. Then there are two AI modes which enhance your images. They do somewhat similar things, but you access them differently. For example, detail enhancer is accessed using the main sensor in 108 megapixel mode. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It enhances, it sharpens the details and images. As you can see here with my picture of the two lenses, 
In the detail in Handshot, the letters, the font on the lens is definitely sharper and crisper. Then you have Focus Enhancer. Focus Enhancer is also used with the main sensor, but in 12 megapixel mode. And what this does essentially is assist you in focusing on close up or quote unquote macro shots. So if you're really close in and the camera's not focusing, you turn on that focus enhancer, which it'll actually show up automatically and kind of turn on automatically when you get a certain distance away from your subject. So that's it. 14 tips, tricks, and buried features for your new Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Like I said, let's go far together. Any tips that we haven't covered in an article on site or here on the YouTube channel, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. Share with the community. We all are better for it. I'm Tashaka Armstrong for Android Central. Don't take it lightly that you spent your time here with us. I will catch you on the next video. Thank you.